Hey, 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 good people. It's your girl, the Drink It Easily, back with another edition of The People Are Blunt. Today, da, 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 I have two amazing people with me. Uh, y'all already know my co host, uh, needs no introduction, but Melanie Davis, how are you, boo? What's up? What's up, Frederica? How are you doing? I am good. I am good. I am loving this red background you got going on. The fire. You coming with fire today? Is it going to be fire? We're coming with all the heat. Okay. Fire bud, fire bud, fire weed, fire infusions. <laughs> we came back from trailblazers on fire. <laughs> hey, we about to, we about to get into it. But we also have Mr. Anthony Hernandez with us today. This is the finance man. Anthony, say <laughs> hey to the people. What up? What up? <laughs> Yo, so um, y'all have been out here in these streets. Today, we want to do a, a little something different um, for the episode because we've been telling y'all that the people are coming out. And so we've been making the rounds. We end in the fourth quarter um on a high note literally on a high note okay and so anthony and melanie uh, earlier this week y'all were at trailblazers um an amazing event oh Over hi california line. formerly uh shumash uh indigenous people's land okay shout out, to, shout out to the shumash indigenous people thank you so much for that um uh, introducing that and recognizing that native land and those people anthony so Tell us, tell the people, how was that experience? Um, Anthony, I'm going to start with you. How was your experience at Trailblazers? Um, <clears throat> well, Ojai is a small town. It's really nice and quaint, but the Ojai Valley Inn where the Trailblazers event took place is, is a really beautiful property. I mean, primarily golf and multiple pools. However, um, it was just a, it was a really relaxed setting, um, moderate weather, warm during the day, chilly at night. Um, but uh, it was, a, I mean, it was a great place to have an event at. Um, if you, you know, I've never stayed at that, but uh, at that resort before. Um, so it was nice to kind of see the other side. <laughs> so that uh, Legacy to Legends hoodie came in, it came in handy, huh, for those cool evenings. <laughs> of course, yes, yes. All the all the gear that I had definitely came, came in handy. Listen, you know, you know, I'm a shout out. You know, I'm a shout out the brand. You know, I'm a shout out our, our gear. Uh, Got to do that. Speaking of gear, because Melanie has some has some new swag on. What's going on, Boo? How was your experience? So my goodness, we're blazing it up at Trailblazers. Oh hi, California is stunning is stunning and you know i'm a homie from albuquerque so yeah small town home girl um but i'm liking this california lifestyle y'all got out here on the west coast like i spent too much time in oregon i needed more time down the i-5 headed south <laughs> yeah um, so kelly showed me the best of the best um the resort was lavish it was beautiful um the people there were beautiful of course we were you know totally immersed in um corporate cannabis environment. Um, so that was a little bit different because, you know, on the property we were told, you know, not to celebrate the plant and or consume it. <laughs> At least do not celebrate the plant by way of consumption. Um, Which was but counterintuitive to all, all of us, right? Most of us. <laughs> it's like, wait, hold on. We hear you talking about it and we can't, we can't be about it. What's going it's, on? Yeah. But, you know, they were pouring up some CBD drinks and beverages and, you know, some mocktails and stuff like that. That was nice. Um, networking in the evenings were, were off the hook. You know, the I met Kim from Trailblazers, who was on-site uh, coordinator. Um, she and her team, phenomenal. So huge shout out to them. Um, Tyler, the, found, the, uh, the, fi the founder, um, met a lot of amazing uh, people. Um, Stuart McCullough, he, he spoke. Um, he's an amazing individual doing a lot of work uh, around communities of color and LGBTQ people. Um, so being able to identify and, and share his knowledge in this space is huge. Um, especially as a queer person of color. So being able to know that it's safe for the for BIPOC queers in this space, you know, is really um, refreshing. 
um, met a lot of growers. So I was definitely happy out there. Finally got yeah. to meet to hear Jacob uh, uh, yeah. Johnson. Right. To hear is everywhere. Like to hear yes. is all over the place talking to everyone. So you got a chance to meet him. Beautiful soul. Beautiful soul, doing the right thing, doing the right thing, and and you know making sure that policy um, that our voice is heard through policy, and we're not deregulated out or, or deregulated regulated out. So right. that was amazing. I can't wait to you know I can't wait to connect with them to hear to hear. Yeah. Whoa, I can't right? wait to connect with you so we can talk policy. We can talk policy rules and regs. I can't wait. So he's going to be a podcast. MJ exactly. Biscon. Wait, what'd you say, Anthony? I was going to say exactly what Melanie said. Oh, okay. So he's going to be a podcast row at MJ Biscon, where the people of Blunt will be. So so he said that um, we, let's all do a mic check. So we're going to coordinate our mic check. So we'll be the first on each other's podcasts. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Dope, dope. Right? Dope. Yes. Right? I'm super right? excited. Yes. And then speaking of that, because I don't want to let Anthony go yet, but um, probably one of the major highlights was not only hearing um, Mr., you know, one of the Fab Five himself, but hearing Chris Weber talk about his $100 million fund. What, what? And doing it correct, doing it right, creating social impact investment. Um, also, um, coexisting with his hundred million dollar fund is his philanthropic fund where they're, you know, helping feed the hungry, helping educate those who need education. They've partnered with cookies, which I'm interested in learning more about with cookies, you, um, from, uh, some seed to sale stuff. And, uh, I'm gonna let Anthony talk all Chris Weber stuff. Cause that was exciting. I, I will say though, I will say Chris Weber is smoking on this. <laughs> Love it. So, Anthony, did you have to um, have Mr. Weber post up? <laughs> I was going to call, was gonna call a timeout on him, but then I decided not to do that. So That's probably um, fair. Uh, <laughs> um, bad Anthony, bad the, Anthony. The Weber Wild Fund, um, which is a, a fund between Chris Weber and Jason Wild. Um, is raising a hundred million dollars. They, I think, I, they mentioned during their presentation mm -hmm. that they've uh, raised thirty million dollars to date. Jason Wild has, um, I think, close to a billion dollars asset under management. So he's definitely somebody that's uh, experienced in the um, invest in, investment space or investing space, um, and has had multiple funds before. Has invested in uh, Canada, made his mistakes up there. Um, they they do have a, a, a an impact focus, uh, but in a foundation, as Melanie said. But I, I find you know um, at the end of the day, uh, Jason Wild is the is the money, and they're using Chris Weber kind of as the celebrity. So was that your highlight? Was was uh, picking it with Chris your highlight, Mr. Weber? <laughs> well, everybody was swarming that to to come up and say hi to Chris. So I was trying to. We were trying actually. Were you playing it cool? Th no, three of us co collectively were waiting our turn, trying to move in. But every time, you know, we would it would be almost our turn. Somebody would swoop in and 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 essentially kind of cut in front of us or. Sabotage. So that happened, but you know how that is. That, my, you know, at some point I was just like, just kept moving closer and closer. And I was like, man, let me just say hello, introduce ourselves, and then, you know, keep it moving. We'll, we'll connect some other time. But then we, we also met up with them uh, shortly after everybody was swarming them. And um, yeah, I think it was cool. I mean, Chris said he's going to get back to us, let us know how he, he felt about the uh, infused it's joints. Like but, but what I really want to talk about, though, like to, to, rewind it back a little bit is um, that uh, when you mentioned corporate cannabis, uh, the presence there and all the bankers, and, and, and I think um, uh, the idea of uh, consumer packaged goods and, and, and the way that cannabis um, is being perceived and going to be evolved uh, uh, as soon as we get closer and closer to federal legalization is uh, that, uh, you know, I guess the easiest way to say it is like the large MSOs and the big um, corporate uh, 
players, uh, whether they come from tobacco or big pharma, um, as well as institutional investors um, are, are coming. And, you know, I think right now we're a little ahead of them because of limitations because of federal legalization um, and investments. But I think in the next three to five years, um, we're going to see a huge shift in, um, in the cannabis space, depending on obviously policy. Yeah, There'll be a shift. There's definitely a shift coming, you know, yeah. having having the Goliaths come in. But we're also ahead of them, not only because of that, but also because of our legacy market. Yeah. I mean, well, so that was another thing that you bring up. So that was one thing that they did talk about quite a bit was um, competing with the legacy market and enforcement. So the CEO of Harborside, CEO of Glass uh, <clears throat> Glasshouse, and then a, a, the new. Uh, Troy, for the CEO of the parent company, um, we're all up on stage. Um, Troy obviously had a different opinion um, than Glasshouse and, and Harborside, um, but one of the one of the key words that I took out of that was enforcement. Enforcement, maybe not so much on the negative side of uh, from the negative effects of incarceration with the war on drugs, but but you know enforcing, you know playing in the 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 legal side is what I, what I'm seeing is like if, yeah. if you know play within the legal market then there's going to be so um, this is a part of what you know we are keeping our finger on the pulse of exactly. right because there are ways in which um, we can be recriminalized there are ways in which harm can be repurposed and so we see that in terms of like compliance and you know the regulatory process of you know creating such tight parameters um, that small businesses, you know, those boutique businesses, those legacy operators who are transitioning into the legal market, just as, you know, just as this company has done, is more difficult. Um, some of those rules can be more difficult for us versus these large, large, excuse me, uh, you know, monstrous, uh, you know, companies that have huge teams behind yeah. them. So this Legal is really resources, yeah. all of that, and they're yeah. able to pay a fine. And keep exactly, you have whole departments, right? Like departments yeah. for each of these things. And yeah. so this is, you know, this is why it's important. The work that we're doing, like us commenting on um, the CAOA, you know, Schumer, Booker and Wyden's bill, us commenting on, you know, safe banking, us commenting on these different um leg legislative pieces, as well as like the rules and regulatory process. This is why we and other BIPOC women-owned businesses mm -hmm. have to be involved. We have to make sure that our voices are a part of these discussions, a part of these conversations, and 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 officially go on record with our comments, right? With our um with our thoughts and our actual stories. Like we have to share the narrative. I you know I say it all the time and Christine and I talk about this that you know it's one thing mm -hmm what's written right what's written is one thing that's kind of theory but then how that translates into practice is a totally different thing and so exactly. we just have to we, we got to keep fighting right we have to be vigilant and making sure that they don't write us out and and also ambiguities i mean my experience just in in in, in contracts with um within finance for financing um ambiguities are there's a lot of smart folks out there that it, whether they're lawyers or understand tax um, and they find loopholes. So I think it's, a, it's a, a making sure that there's not, there's not any language and anything that we come to the table to help either write or structure, uh, but there's ambiguities in because whenever there's ambiguities, you can exploit those. Absolutely. You know, ambiguities. That's, that's Anthony saying the devil's in those details. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or lack thereof. Right. <laughs> you know, I was really surprised. Um, I mean, I felt like Troy um, Jatcher from the parent company, he was a good addition to the panel. Unfortunately, you know, um, he's only been on the job 23 days, so didn't have a lot of answers. Um, so I felt like maybe, especially for the price of this ticket um because it's really expensive to be there <laughs> yeah. um you gotta pay to play huh you gotta pay to play you gotta and pay to play in that in that environment for sure and but that's another thing a lot of us i just want to say this melanie not to cut you off but that's the other mm -hmm. thing a lot of us right a lot of small businesses 
don't have the funds to pay mm -hmm. to play and to be in these spaces mm -hmm. with those investors, with those VCs, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, th that's something that like, we got to make sure that we're pulling people, we're putting that hand out and pulling them along with us, yep. you know? But continue your point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I know he's been on the job for 23 days and such. Um, so he didn't have like a lot of answers. So I was disappointed with that because that was the voice on that panel who could have really talked and spoke to um, enforcement. Unfortunately, he, he also sided with enforcement. I was really surprised to hear um, Harborside talk so aggressively about how they need to lay into enforcement, considering they're behind the last prisoner project. Right. Right. And so that one really floored me. Um, so I'll be interested uh, at MJ BizCon to connect with the D'Angelo brothers and and see if that is really the case. Uh, you know, I think I heard on a recent um, webinar that um, that Steve D'Angelo was on that they may have severed ties or they may not be linked with Harborside. I'll, I'll check that. I'll, I'll double check on that because I was just I was just watching a webinar. So I want to make sure that we're able to be clear on that. I'll double check and see what that yes. relationship is like. Let's, let's yeah. do that. And then I want to um, and then I'll, I'll talk with Anthony offline to follow the VC money to be sure what that that separation looks like and how how separate it really is, because yeah, yeah that was some real aggressive language like the thing that stood out immediately in my mind. I mean, there we are in California where, you know, we grow the food of the world and I'm hearing enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. The first thing that literally the graphic image that popped in my mind is all the movements that Cesar Chavez has fought for us to have, you know, fair wages, unionization, um, yeah. pesticides that aren't going to kill us and you. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. That's exactly how the farm owners treated us. And they came through with enforcement and it was very gruesome. Yes. Um, so it, it really triggered me when they were saying that. But yeah. other than that, you know, got to talk to a lot of great people, hang out with some amazing um, uh, individuals. Um, so, so overall, overall Trailblazers was a thumbs up. Y'all had a good couple of days. Oh, for sure. One of the highlights for me was uh, the dinner that um, the chef uh, Haru Kishi uh, made for us on um, on the second night. It was uh, it was it was it, the the flavors combination of texture. They it wasn't an infused dinner. We weren't so lucky, but um, uh, it, it just everything about that meal was phenomenal. It was a little bit too. Uh, the, the portion size or control was a little bit too much for a tasting menu, but it was it was an awesome meal for sure. That was one of the highlights for me. Outside of the Weber thing, obviously, yes. taking Weber's hand, that was the, the biggest highlight um, for me just because I, I, I'm a Weber fan. So, Chris Weber taught me the most important lesson when we met him. It's <laughs> like, I don't, care, I don't care if you're floating around a bunch of millionaires or whatever, but... If you're the homie with the weed at the party, you're still the coolest one in the room. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's it. Have to slide him some extra joints. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, that's so dope. I'm so excited, so happy that you all were able to experience that. Um, Trailblazers, thank you for having you. the people. Thank you for uh for welcoming us. And um, hey, just a side note, like next year's event let's have it at a place that we can actually consume like let's liven this up a little bit you know i mm. mean we're there to talk about the plant let's actually be able to enjoy it in all of its many ways in all of its forms and receive all of the blessings right because the plant mm -hmm. is a blessing we want to receive we want to receive so, I mean, if we're in California, why do we have to be discreet about it, right? Yeah, we in Cali. Like, what's up? Cali love. It, yeah. it, we regulate it, right? Yep, regulate over there. So, like, let's do that. Um, yeah. So, dope. Awesome. Well, Anthony, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us for the first portion of uh, this episode. Uh, hey, y'all. Y'all be seeing more Anthony. Anthony 
Anthony be trying to act like he's shy, but we have to, we got to pull him in. We got to pull him in. Oh, and as y'all can see, he gets, he gets a little live. Once he gets warmed up, he gets a little live. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Thank you so much again for, uh, for joining us and uh, we'll holla. Thank and you Anthony for was great to roll with. I got to see luck, Anthony. Good luck with the edits. <laughs> Later, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye, Anthony. All right, boo. Ooh, so, let's chop it up, Frederica. <laughs> so um, we, we're keeping this episode short and sweet. So the only the only story I want to dig into was something that, um, as you all were just talking about your experience at Trailblazer Blazers and what's to come, um, and you know just the writing on the wall, so to speak. I came across this article. Um, that spoke to malls in Canada actually having retail, actually having cannabis retail in the malls in Canada. And was I was like, you know what? This is the future. Like we know in terms of cannabis, Canada is our big brother or big sister, right? Um, so we know what's going on up there. It's only a matter of time before it actually, you know, kind of comes on down and becomes the reality in the States. And so uh, it started with, uh, in November of 2019, Aurora Canna opened up an 11,000 square foot um, retail spot, retail and merchandise in the Edmonton Mall. And now today, 11,000 11, square feet. Yes, it was essentially two spaces that were like next to each other. So one is retail and the other is like their merchandise. Okay. And still, so they're now, selling all the weed. That's a lot. Of, that's a footprint. I mean, that's a lot they're of selling space. all the weed and all the gear. <laughs> that's a lot of space. And so now you have um, Canopy Growth Company, Tokyo Smoke, and FICA who are going to be opening opening up like four locations in the Cadillac Fairview um, Mall Group. One of them, and because I'm from Buffalo, New York, like I'm familiar with this, but the Eaton Center. So that is like they're all glass mall. So mm -hmm. they are going to have a retail, like Eaton Center is like one of the premier malls, right? So they're going to have a location there. Um, the article cited a couple of, you know, um, cool reasons or whatever in terms of why one would want to take on the premium expense of opening in the mall. So you have, you know, you have a loyal base or you have a base, excuse me, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the employees at the mm -hmm. mall, right? One opening you up to a totally new demographic mm -hmm. and three, I mean, just the foot traffic alone, right? So those are like three key reasons that they gave in terms of, yeah, is it more, maybe it's more expensive to open in a mall versus like your standard storefront, but these are reasons why it, it, it would be worth it. So I wanted to share that. And I also wanted to like, get your take on like how freaking crazy is this? This is amazing. This is amazing. They're like the big, instead of big box store, they're the big zip store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna coin that one, <laughs> but um, this is this is something to definitely celebrate. Um, as somebody who hates to shop, I would definitely go to a mall if I knew I could shop and consume that and calm me, calm my ass down from all the sensory overload of everything happening <laughs> in the mall, a multiplex environment. Well, and I was um, thinking of I was thinking of like holiday shopping or just shopping in general, but definitely holiday shopping because you know. Uh, you always have the, what they call it, the father chairs, like those chairs where the dads are just, you know, sitting there and they're collecting the bags. That's you. Okay. So you, so you sitting in the, you sitting in the, the lazy boy seat and, and collecting my family the bags. My knows I hate shopping. They got my girlfriend a, a Costco membership card because they just, they just won't do it with me. They say I make a horrible sigh sound like i'm too dramatic about it <laughs> i'm just like whatever i'll so, let my family tell you <laughs> i just have all of these visuals though i have all of these visuals of like oh babe you want to go shopping you you, you yep. want to go shopping oh i'll go shopping with you absolutely i'll go yep. shopping with you 
let me give me a little sativa. Uh -huh. I'll walk around this mall with you all day. I will be so productive. I will mm -hmm. be so helpful. All of the commentary, like I'm here for you. Or I can give me a hybrid. I can go sit in this chair, give me a little snack. And, and mm -hmm. I'll be waiting for you when you're done. No argument. I feel like exactly. this is going to help relationships. This is this will be a relationship booster for real, for real. Those massage chairs are gonna those coin operated massage chairs and stuff are gonna be making all the money. Like I'm gonna Absolutely. go invest in those right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, hey people, y'all might even want to like step y'all game up and have some like have the food court be able to like deliver to the chair area or. There you go. I mean, I don't know. I'm saying, can you come bring me something? Uh, I, I will. I tip well. Uh, but I definitely see this as being a game changer. So wanted to introduce that. Uh, but before we wrap up, um, we will be out in the streets again. MJ BizCon 2021. <laughs> um, yo, I am like so looking forward to this and also so overwhelmed just looking at the schedule, looking at the layout, you know, it being in the convention center and them clearly taking up all the space. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts? The, the only other thing I will say is that we are going to be on podcast row. Officially, the people are blunt. We'll be, um, you know, doing some interviews. I'm so excited about people who we have lined up and, and, and people who we are um, confirming. Um, as we speak, right? Like fill in those slots. Oh, so yeah. dope. Uh, here, I can't wait to mic check with you. But I mean, what are y'all, like our schedule for BizCon is crazy. Like no sleep, like team no sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. It's going to be team no sleep. We're hitting the ground running. Um, I'm excited about all of it. All of it. Um, the first thing I do want to recognize, and this is something that I've been doing going into these spaces, obviously understanding that um, they're very white male dominant spaces, but I've been going into these spaces, connecting, intentionally connecting with my ancestors and recognizing that their ancestors, our ancestors, all of our ancestors have brought us to this center space. At MJ BizCon, like center space is, qualifies as like three football fields, <laughs> but we're all there to make a difference. And I know some are like, you know, the margins, the margins, the margins and all of these things. But there are the few that we're able to see in these spaces and, and, and build that tribe, the tribe of the rainbow people who really need to do the work to not only save the planet, to save the soul of the plant um, and the collective and, and do what really, what our children are screaming at us to do. Um, this is really our opportunity to make it happen. This is 2021. The things we've been talking about since 2000, since the 90s, since the 80s, the 70s, like this is the time. So let's do it. Let's do it together. And this is our chance to get it done correctly. So no margin of error. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So look, y'all, the people will be there. The people are blunt. And we're going to be blunt um, there too. <laughs> ecosystem. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be in this space. If y'all see us, please like say, hey, like holla, like let's bump an elbow or something. You know what I mean? Like we would love... Um, you know, we would love to kick it with you. We would love to learn more about you, what you have going on. Um, I would be remiss if I did not say, please like and subscribe. If you like hearing us talk blunt, if you like kicking it with us, you know what I'm saying, on, on this regular basis, please like, please subscribe. Um, and also um, our newsletter. So not just liking and subscribing on YouTube, but also our newsletter. Um, make sure that you are on the list. Um, we, we talk about it, you know, and we are curating um, some of, I would say, the most important or at least highlighting the most important stories that are coming out of cannabis news, especially those that are going to impact BIPOC women communities um, mm -hmm. that, you know, that you need to be up on. So till next time, we will be seeing you in the streets of Vegas soon. 
Yes. Um, the people are blunt. What you say, Melanie? So I'm going to say the dice are out. All bets are on. See you in Vegas. Stay blunt it, folks. Stay blunt it. And, and guess what? And smoke what? Oh, and smoke this and smoke this and smoke this and smoke this and like 51 other things. We're going into Vegas with 51 SKUs, a full deck, folks. The play is We ain't club. playing. We ain't mm -hmm. playing. Till next time, y'all. I want to the mama plant. <laughs> Till next time, y'all. The people are blunt. We love y'all. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a.